guys. Uh, obviously, BlizzCon, big day for big conference for you guys. Uh, Overwatch is the first new IP of Blizzard has introduced to the public in a while. Are you feeling pressure because of that? I think uh, on the art side, on the visual side, for us, uh, it's just really exciting to create this new IP. Um, it's something that, uh, from the very early stages of the project, the idea of creating these these really unique, powerful, over-the-top heroes with you know very diverse backgrounds and looks was something that we just really were excited by. Um, and I'm, of course, there's the design aspects of it too. Yeah, we're just super excited. I mean, we've been. Uh working really hard on this game. You know, we announced it last year at BlizzCon, but like, you know, now it's like we're, we're in beta, you know, it's like even more people have like seen our game. It's, it's just it's just an amazing super time for us. Like the team is really feeling jazz to like, you know, finally like, you know, finish this finish this game and uh, get into the hands of the players. I, I gotta ask one thing about the new characters you introduced. Because sure. one of them is named Melee. And the other is a cybernetic ninja. Are you guys Metal Gear fans or something? Because, <laughs> well, well, we we love cyber ninjas. We, okay, who's that? I mean, exactly. I think we uh, love mechs. We love mechs. We love cyber ninjas. We we just can't have it. I'm not <laughs> I mean, You're not alone in that department. Uh, so you were talking about how, uh, as an art, our uh, an artist, Overwatch proposed like a lot of new possibilities for you guys. And Overwatch kind of stays a little bit away from some of the other Blizzard concepts. We see a lot of fantasy and a lot of high sci-fi on the other games. Was it? Did you did you work on other Blizzard games before? And was it like a, f a fresh water to have Overwatch this different different place? You know, I was uh, really fortunate to work on a few other of the Blizzard IPs. Uh, I worked on StarCraft. Um, uh, along with Scott, StarCraft 1. Uh, I worked on World of Warcraft uh, on the release of that project. Um, I think for Overwatch, we take inspiration from a lot of things. Like, um, you could even look at StarCraft and look at some of the technology in StarCraft we absolutely love. We were, we were talking about cyber ninjas and, yeah. and tech and mechs, like we love that. Um, for me personally, like in Overwatch, um, the color, the bright world, that really vibrant world was something um, that I was really inspired by, by uh, World of Warcraft, right? So yes, I think there's there's certain uh, aspects from a lot of the projects that, that, that kind of formulate together. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you could speak a little bit about gameplay aspects of the new characters, uh, what's the most exciting thing that you, you think about these ones that you just introduced? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of different things. So for me personally, um, I really enjoyed playing May lately. Um, her ice ball is, I think, a real big game changer. You could actually create geometry yeah. in the world, so, and there's just so many things you can do with it. You can like break up an enemy team and split them apart so they can't support each other. You can put a wall um, in, a, in a walkway to prevent reinforcements from coming in, so you can finish off like your, your fight. Um, if you put the ice wall underneath a teammate, it actually the formation of the ice wall actually brings them up. And then I can reach ledges that you couldn't otherwise get. So there's just so many different things you can do. But then you look at Genji, and he's just super mobile, crazy, like cyber ninja, <laughs> I, I double players. jump, and well, I'm climbing up on walls and dashes. And I played as him to the, like yesterday. Loved it. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. The ultra is awesome. <laughs> Slash this, everyone that. Yeah, it's such a great moment. Uh, one of the interesting, one of the interesting things I feel about Overwatch is that you, it seems to take a lot of MOBA's concept and add it to uh, shooter style because you have the ultimates and you have the heroes each one of their perspective. Uh, both on art wise and gameplay wise, did you look at Heroes of the Storm or maybe other MOBA's in to understand like how can we tra transport heroes to shooter uh, a shooter arena? Yeah, I think I mean for us, there's, you talk about MOBA inspiration and it's not really just um, inspiration from that like style of the game. I and mean, when you talk about the ultimates. You can actually look at fighting games yeah. in a way where it's like, hey, if you as you deal damage and you take damage, the ultimate um, actually you build that ultimate to the point where you can actually use it. So that was that was a different kind of like inspiration. Um, the abilities were just something we felt like it was it added so much to each individual character. We were able to do things besides just well, what weapons. You know, we could really say it's like, well, um, you know, right, we've got um, Diva and her mech like. Well, what does her mech do besides just like shooting? 
oh, well, she's got this crazy defense matrix. Shoot down all these like projectiles and mm. so forth. Like, it really allows design-wise to give each hero um, more to do, um, allow the, um, each character to feel more impactful in the world, and also because we're a team game, provide their team with you know capabilities that they other otherwise wouldn't have. I think on the art side, it's really interesting too because uh, readability is a really big factor in the design of Overwatch from the art perspective where we want to make sure the silhouettes of the heroes read really well against the background. We'd like to make sure the effects read correctly off, you know, what kind of map you're playing. Even like the animation, clearly seeing are they using their weapon, are they running, are they jumping. So readability really comes into play in Overwatch too. Um, so you can really study the gameplay. Even the uh, the maps, the eight global, uh, global uh, locations we have today, um, you can see clearly like where you should go. We like to, on the level design side, make sure you know where the payload is. Oh, I could jump up on this level. So readability is a really key factor in the art. Uh, one of the big things on BlizzCon is obviously the championships. We're having a bunch of world championships here. And Overwatch, naturally, because it's a competitive shooter, it has potential for that. Yeah. Do you keep Esports in mind while you're designing, or just making let's ju just make sure we have a full competitive multiplayer. If esports happens, great. Well, I think in the process of making for us a great game, part of that is actually being able to, as someone who watches it, understand what's going on. And that's something. If when you're playing it, we want the exact same thing. We want you to make you to be able to make sure. We want you to be sure that you can see at a glance what's going on in the battlefield, yeah. right? And that translates over to esports. Um, and then. Totally esports is something like Blizzard's very like, invested in, and we're going to continue to work on Overwatch with esports specific features, better observation modes, better ways to view the action, um, to allow um, for interesting stories to develop as as the action takes place, and you being able to see that and, and experience that, and for someone who's casting it to be able to talk over it, and, you know, and be able to like note. And, and Overwatch is like, there's so many, since we have 21 heroes and they all have these like unique abilities, it, how they all interact with each other creates situations where you're like, oh, I've never seen that before. <laughs> you know, it's like some like crazy unique things that happen. And it's those little moments of, wow, that just happened that I think will really help make Overwatch a great use for us. Uh, after the announcements that you guys made at the opening ceremony, a lot of people went online to say, oh, I was expecting this game to be free to play, I was expecting it to be a different pricing model maybe. Did you guys talk about that, maybe launching it as a free to play? How did you come up to decide, oh, let's make it a $40 game and 60 for consoles? Sure. I mean, first and foremost, we just said about trying to make a great game, sure. right? And that really, that came first and, and not the business model. Um, so as we're developing the game, as we're you know, we have this idea for the you know, six on six, team based, like all these heroes. The more we played it, the more we started to understand that being able to switch a hero uh, during a match was very important to us. Um, it allowed you to counter what your enemy was doing um, much better. It allowed you to, if you started playing with one hero and you're like, oh man, I just don't, I'm not aiming well with McCree right now. It's like, oh, instead of like having to you know, play through that entire <laughs> yeah. match, and you know, going like, oh, I wish I could play something else. Well, you can. And that actually became a very, like, critical part the more we played and the understanding of that. So we really wanted to make sure for the least we had the 21 heroes at launch all available to players. So if they do run into a situation where they feel like, oh, it would be awesome if we could, like, have a Zarya on our team right now, that Zarya is available. That the, um, and we have multiple tanks, multiple supports. Um, so, for the, whatever situation you run into, you'll be able to switch to it. I see. Uh, but it is something like selling characters after release. You guys may be think, thinking about that because you say that you're including 21 heroes, but that leaves room open for future additions later. Sure. Um, that's something we're, as far as after uh, the release, after we like, um, after the 21 heroes, to be honest, we're not really exactly sure. Well, okay. I mean, we're going to we're going to support the game. We're absolutely going to support the game. But how that takes shape, whether it's heroes, maps, whatever it might be, and what it might cost, we just don't know at this point. I mean, it's really something where we'll um, after it's released, after it's in the hands of players, after after we see um, 
a lot of things, you know, data, community feedback, how we feel about the game. Then we'll make the decision going forward, like, hey, what's right for Overwatch? And one of the also cool things that you guys showed at the ceremony, something that I know uh, fans have been asking about, was skins. And I, I wanted you to uh, talk about a little, a little bit about what's the design uh, philosophy behind the skins? What do you want to convey with them? I think on the art side, um, we definitely want to create something that's that's definitely unique and special, um, something that um, gives a little bit of story also uh, to the heroes, um, and also um, still, you know, fits in with their, I would say, general character as well. Um, so on the skin side, we just want something that's like really excites people and, and plays fun. Um, I'm sure on the design side, there's, there's some other elements on there too. Uh, for first games, we just make sure that like, there's no competitive advantage. You're not going to choose sure. a skin because it's like, oh, well, the yeah. hitbox doesn't change or anything else. So we're very careful to make sure that like, if you choose a skin, it's because you want to just look that way. Yeah. You know, that, char that character will be designed to you. And that, that's, that's the real reason for it. I see. And Overwatch also marks a, a, another advance for Blizzard in consoles. It's uh, both on the PS4 and yeah, launched. Uh, why did you think that this is the game to bring there, to take the console? Did you guys look at Diablo's success there, or was it something that came naturally? Yeah, but we've talked to we've talked to the Diablo, uh, the Diablo three team. Um, learned learned quite a bit from them and their their experience. I think also we just looked at um, something where first person shooters are very popular on consoles. Um, so we know that there's a lot of players that that's you know they they enjoy the, those games there, and then. We really felt like Overwatch, um, with its like, you know, a couple, you know, with heroes having like, a couple weapons and a few abilities, that that would totally be a fit for like a console controller as well. And it's actually been an interesting that restriction of not having so many abilities that you can't fit them all on the controller. Yeah. It's actually been good for us as designers because we know that like it restricts us from going too crazy. We can't put so many abilities on something that <laughs> um, it becomes too complicated. Like. You, can't pick it up super fast. So it's actually been like a, I think a really positive force for our hero design, knowing that these are all going to be playable on console. All right. Okay, guys, that's what I have for you today. Uh, uh, thanks, for, thanks for your time. Great questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.